Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In the last video, we looked at how phrase structure rules don't make the correct predictions about the internal structure of noun phrases. Instead, we saw that we needed a more rich set of rules that would get intermediate structure into the noun phrase to account for the one replacement test. In particular, we proposed three rules, a rule that introduced the determiner, an n-bar rule, which introduced adjectival and prepositional uh, modifiers, which was self-iterative, that it allowed um, self-recursive, it allowed the rule to apply to itself, and then a final rule that introduced the head. We called these the x-bar rules. Now, um, it would be uninteresting if um, this only applied within noun phrases, then it's just a minor revision to phrase structure rules. But it turns out that there's good evidence for this, these intermediate categories in all sorts of other phrases as well. One of the most robust cases is the verb phrase. And we'll see that when we add modifiers into the verb, there's also evidence for intermediate structure. So here's our flat structure for a verb phrase as created by the phrase structure rule um, that we proposed in previous units. Um, this, and at the time, I pointed out to you that this is a pretty ugly rule, especially with all those clean pluses that allow you to repeat items. Um, but we'll see that when we actually probe this structure, uh, the, there's evidence that this constituency is just wrong. This internal constituency is wrong. So let's start by talking about a replacement operation in English called does so too or does to. Um, it depends upon the context and the, um, and the dialect how much of that little replacement you actually do, whether you do does so too or you do, do does so or you do does to or you just say does. Um, that doesn't matter. In any, it doesn't matter which of those operations sounds best to you. Um, the replacement, the fact that you can do a replacement is evidence for constituency, which is what is relevant here. So let's take the sentence, John often sings opera loudly at church, and Mary does so too. So what does the does so too, or does to, if you prefer, replace? It seems to replace the string all of it, right? So it seems to replace the entire string. So this operation does seem to target everything underneath the verb phrase. But it also targets items that are smaller than this. So let's look at this sentence. Uh, John often sings opera loudly at church, and Mary frequently does too. Here, we seem to be replacing sings opera, opera loudly at church. And that is not a constituent inside of our verb phrase. So there's something gone wrong if our, we can do a replacement operation and it's, not, uh, and it's targeting something that is not, in fact, a constituent. Um, consider this one. John often sings loudly at church, but Mary rarely does so in the library. Seems to be targeting um, sings opera loudly. Again, not a constituent. Um, John often sings opera loudly at church, but Mary rarely does so quietly in the library. Here you're targeting sings and opera. Again, not a constituent in our tree structure. So does so to replacement or does to replacement seems to um, target elements that are not in fact constituents. But we know that replacement operations are evidence for constituency. So clearly we have to revise our VP rule. All right, the structure that we're gonna propose looks like this one here. 
This one, just like the noun phrase rule, has these intermediate categories of V bar. The bar, again, we indicate with an apostrophe, even though it's not technically a bar. And um, I will say one thing about the very top of this tree. At the top of the tree, I have this vacuous little structure where the verb phrase goes down to a V bar. Um, this is going to be mysterious for a little while. In unit 10, we'll come back to this and we'll have a reason why I did it this way. But for the moment, you're just going to have to accept that uh, this mysterious extra piece of structure right underneath the verb phrase. And for the moment, when you draw all your trees, just go VP goes down to V bar. Okay, just like I've drawn here. I, I've not proven this to you yet, but I will when we come back to it in chapter 10. Okay, so with this structure, we have the constituency we need to account for those does so and does so to uh, replacements. In each case, the does so or does so to replaces the V bar category. Okay, now to get that tree structure, we need to revise our rules. So we can't just have that long, complicated VP rule. Instead, we have three rules that we're going to propose. Uh, the first one is the one that generates that little vacuous bit on the top of the tree. I have not proven that to you, but we will come back to it. The second one is the one that adds various kinds of modifiers. So it um, adds in either adverb phrases before the head or um, adverb phrases and prepositional phrases after the head. Again, this rule is self-recursive. So it can apply as many times as you like, and it will get that stretched out structure you saw where each modifier is attached in. Um, it can apply as many times as you need it to do. The third rule is the rule that introduces the head verb and the direct object. So V bar goes to V and noun phrase. And of course the noun phrase is optional. Okay, so let's um, talk about what the does to um, rule does. It replaces a V bar node, not a VP, not a verb, with did so to or did so or did to or did, whatever one works best. Okay, so let's look at this structure here. Now remember, we said that it replaces V bar, not V. So you can't say, um, uh, John often sings opera loudly in church, but Mary seldom does so folk songs quietly in the library. That should be terrible for you. So you can't do do replacement into um, just the head. Instead, it seems to target those V bar categories as you move up the tree. So John often sings opera loudly in church, um, but Mary seldom does so quietly in the library. That's targeting that first V bar above the head. We've got John often sings opera loudly in church, but Mary seldom does so in the library. That's targeting the next V bar up. John often sings opera loudly in church, um, but Mary seldom does so. That is targeting um, the V bar above that. And then John often sings opera loudly in church, and Mary does so too, targets the V bar um, right underneath the verb phrase. So these, VP, these V bar structures account for all the possible do so replacements that um, you can have. Um, here's another example of evidence for V bar. Remember, one of our constituency tests was coordination or conjunction. So if you can stick two things together, you know that they are um, a constituent. You can do this um, inside of verb phrases. So the prepositional phrase with a fork seems to modify the conjoined structure eats beans and shovels hay. At least that's one possible interpretation. There is an interpretation where it's just shoveling hay with a fork. But there is a, there's also the interpretation where the fork is used to both eat beans and shovel hay. That's only possible to get that interpretation if you have a V bar category, which can be conjoined together 
in a way, and that conjoined element is modified by with a fork. And so that's additional evidence that we have these intermediate structures. All right, we also have evidence, although I will admit to you it's slightly weaker, um, that there is uh, intermediate structure in prepositional phrases, adjective phrases, and adverb phrases. Let's look at prepositional phrases. Our rule up to now has been PP goes to P and then an optional NP. And whether or not the NP is optional is a separate question. It's probably a little more complicated than that. So take the sentence, Tara is very in love with her boss. Here we have seem to have a structure where we have a modifier of the prepositional phrase. Um, and we also have um, a noun phrase and a modifying PP. So the noun phrase is love and uh, with her boss is a prepositional phrase. Now I will say this is a bit of an idiom. So it's very hard to construct um, prepositional phrases this complex that don't use the idiom in love. There's just a couple of phrases that fit this pattern. But the pattern does exist, so we need to account for it. So we might propose the flat structure rule, uh, PP goes to adverb phrase, preposition, noun phrase, prepositional phrase. Um, just consistent with what we had previously done in phrase structure rules for VPs and um, noun phrases and all those other categories. But it turns out that this particular flat structure rule also has to be wrong. It misses out um, intermediate structure. So um, take, for example, um, our flat structure tree as I've drawn it here for this phrase, very in love with her boss. And we can see that we can do a replacement operation that seems to target a structure smaller than, um, uh, smaller than the prepositional phrase, but bigger than just the preposition. So Mary was very in love with her boss. Susanna was less so. So replacement is what happens in prepositional phrases, adjective phrases, and um, adverb phrases. And the so here seems to be targeting in love with her boss, uh, which is not a constituent in this tree. Similarly, you can target just in love. So Mary was in love with her boss, but was less so with her husband. Um, there, what we've targeted is that preposition and noun phrase. Again, not a constituent. So how do we fix this? Well, we fix it the same way we fix the verb phrase and noun phrase rules. We have to have um, these intermediate categories. We're going to propose three rules. Just like the verb phrase, take it on faith from me for the moment about the first rule. We will come back to that. Um, but the, what's important are the second and third rules. Um, the second rule, again, is an iterative rule or a self-recursive rule, if you prefer, which feeds itself. So you can have any, any number of p-bar categories as you need. And then the third rule introduces the head noun and the noun phrase. So this gives us a tree uh, like the following. Again, the top of the tree is mysterious. Um, you're just going to have to trust me for a moment. Uh, I know that's hard, but go for it. And then we have this intermediate structure where um, we have a, a three P bars, and uh, those P bars uh, each dominate a modifier of the preposition. So the lowest one dominates the uh, noun phrase, um, typical noun phrase object of a preposition, and then the ones above it um, take these additional uh, modifiers with her boss and vary. Um, I'll have to say there is a little bit less evidence for this uh, than there is for the verb phrases and noun phrases. And that's probably because prepositional phrase structures are typically not this complicated. And it's also probably the case that they're... they're um, you get less kinds of replacement operations because the preposition is a functional category and the other ones are lexical categories. All right, so what about um, adjective phrases and adverb phrases? Um, 
it seems to be the case that you can actually do so replacement here, uh, just like you can with prepositional phrases. So you can say Lynn is interested in syntax, but less so in phonology. Um, so this uh, suggests to us that there is this kind of intermediate structure in adjective phrases and adverb phrases, um, but there's the, the evidence for it is a lot more tricky to, con to construct. So we're going we're gonna to adopt it for what we call parsimony reasons. Okay, Parsimony r means that because all the other categories have this structure, we're going to assume that adjective phrases and adverb phrases have this structure as well. That's not great um, scientific reasoning, but it is common scientific reasoning. So you can make adjustments to your hypothesis based on, uh, on patterns that are no, not directly reflected in the data or only reflected in very subtle ways in the data, um, provided that it's the kind of pattern you find elsewhere in the system. So that's a, a common method of revising hypotheses across science. Um, it's to follow parsimony. Um, it would be better if we had really good empirical evidence. So we had um, data that showed us that these, this was true. The data is weak, but um, we'll go with it anyway. Um, so here again, we will propose three rules. A vacuous rule, which generates a structure at the top. Again, I'm asking a lot of you on faith. We will come back to that. A rule that allows you to add in modifiers like prepositional phrases and adverb phrases, and a rule that introduces the had. And you could also assume the same set of rules for adverbs.